welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. Today we're talking about sin. But the good news is, is that sin does not have to control us. We can break bad habits and we can form good habits. So stay with me now as we continue on the subject of forming good habits. Well, what about sin? Why do we have such a hard time? Why, you know, why do we go get born again and then we still have a hard time? You know, these things hanging on to us. Well, you know, we're in a process and it takes time to have these things broken off of us. There's no doubt about that. But I think one of the things is, is we just lack knowledge. The Bible says in Romans 6, 2, certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So the Bible says you're dead to sin. You're dead to sin. You know what that means? You don't have any relationship with it anymore. When you're dead to something, it means you don't want to do it. And you know what the truth of the matter is, is way down deep inside, you are dead to sin. You died on the cross when he died. You were buried when he was buried, but you also were raised when he was raised. And the Bible says you were raised to a brand new life and you have been set free from sin. You say, well, if I'm set free from it, then why am I still in bondage to it? Because you still don't really believe that you've been set free from it. <laughs> Okay, let's look at another scripture. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it takes a while. I mean, I had to study Romans 6 until I just thought my eyeballs would fall out years ago to finally get a hold of this. Well, if I'm dead to sin, then why do I still want to knock somebody's head off every time they... I mean, I sure don't feel very dead. I feel very much alive. <laughs> and I had to get this understanding that this is talking about what we have inside and that the Holy Spirit, if we'll let Him, He will help us work it to the outside, but when you're working anything, it's not comfortable because you're working it, you're developing it, you're forming a new habit, you're working a new muscle, but then all of a sudden, whew, you're free from that. And that's no longer a bondage in your life. And you know what, if you begin to look at it properly, it's actually exciting. Instead of being such a burden and something that we don't want to go through, it's actually exciting and you love to see the next thing that God gives you in your life to conquer. Okay, now look at, verse, uh, look at verse 11 for a minute. He says, even so consider yourselves dead to sin and your relationship to and broken. But consider yourself alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with Him in Christ Jesus. Now the word consider means how do you think? So he says, you need to think, you need to believe, you need to say, I'm dead to sin. My relationship to sin is broken. Sin no longer has any authority over me. Whether it's drinking or, or gambling or any other kind of a habit, you went over some kind of sexual perversion, whatever it might be, bad temper, selfishness, self-centeredness, the list is endless. And it's not that we don't make mistakes. I make mistakes every day, but I'm talking about the stuff that people are in bondage to, the stuff that they just can't. I mean, you know, if, if every single time a person doesn't get their way, they've got to get mad and upset, that's bondage. Now, I still occasionally lose my temper, but I tell you what, it is very far and few between. And I used to live mad. And I mean, the only way that anybody could get along with me was to let me have everything I wanted. And you know what? I was in bondage to selfishness. I was in bondage to a bad temper. I was in bondage to being impatient. And you know what I had to do? I had to study and I had to, I had to believe that that fruit of the Spirit was on the inside of me. I had to believe that fruit of peace and goodness was on the inside of me. And I had to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to let it get worked out. And it was very, it really wasn't all, it was painful in my flesh, but the instructions are not that hard. All I had to do was learn when the Holy Spirit said, shut up. <laughs> then I just needed to shut up. Well, that didn't stop the raging in my soul. Why? Because my flesh had a bad habit. You know how a little kid acts when they've got a bad habit? How do they act when you take their bottle? How do they act when you take their pacifier? 
How do, you, how do they act when you start wanting them to go to the bathroom on the, the big people's potty instead of the little people's potty? I mean, they can hold their stuff all day. Not gonna go. <laughs> You're not gonna make me give it up. <laughs> Take my pacifier. <laughs> I mean, all you think, how long can you scream? <laughs> well, see, our, and you know what? If you go give it back to them, you've still got it all to go through again, don't you? It's the same way with us. Every time we give in to our flesh, we've still got it all to go through again. Come on, praise the Lord. We're going to make progress here this weekend. Yeah. Say, I'm dead to sin. Yes. I don't have a relationship with sin. I don't want to sin. And here's a big one right here. I'm not afraid of sin. People wake up and they're afraid of what they're going to do before they ever get out of bed. <laughs> well, you know, I have a problem. I have, I have a problem with this. I'm, af I'm afraid I'll do that again today. You know, I used to say I could get along with everybody when nobody was home. <laughs> but sooner or later, you got to learn how to get along with people when they're there, not just when they're not there. Is there anybody here that was ever as bad as I was? <laughs> then I hope my life gives you hope. <laughs> you know what our big problem is? We wait to feel like doing what's right. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen this in the last two years. I've been preaching this for two years now. You must learn to do what's right when you still feel wrong. Otherwise, you will never get the victory in your life. You cannot wait to feel like giving. You cannot wait to feel like being a blessing. You cannot wait to feel like forgiving. You can't wait to feel like being merciful. You can't wait to feel like being unselfish. You just do it. And you don't do it by your own strength and power. You do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We form new habits. Everybody say, habits. All right, I would like you to go to uh, Romans chapter 8. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. How many of you see that? If you live according to the dictates of the flesh, and, and how many of you know your flesh is a dictator? If we live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually the Amplified Bible says. Now, I think that this may be the only translation that brings this out, but I love this. It teaches me so much. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, making extinct, and deadening the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely and truly live. Do you know how we form a habit? We initially, we just... Basically, through the power of God, we choose to do what's right, no matter how it feels. But you know, just doing it once is not enough. You have to choose it again and again and again and again. And after maybe this first handful of times, because see, the, the devil will, you'll have a certain period of time where it's going to look like this isn't working. And that's, boy, that's such a testing area because the devil wants to make you think, well, this isn't working. You might as well just forget this. This is just too hard and you're not getting any results. There's no fruit from this. And you just say, devil, I'm going to do it till I wear you out. And you just do it and you do it. Now, all of a sudden you get over here and you're like, man, this isn't as hard as it used to be. And then it's getting easier. And, and now pretty soon you're starting to do it and you don't even have to try to do it. Now, you, you, you were totally selfish over here. Totally caught up here in yourself. Robot, what about me? What about me? What about me? You know, that thing. <laughs> totally into that whole thing. And now, you're over here somewhere, and you wake up in the morning 
thinking about what you can do for somebody else. And you think, who is this in my bed? Oh. But you gotta go through to get there, don't you? Somebody just blessed me with a piece of exercise equipment. I love it when people bless me with exercise equipment. I'm like, okay, is that a word from God? Because you know what? I just don't like to do it. Now, my husband loves to exercise. You know why? He's been doing it every other day since he was 16. It's so much a part of Dave's life. I mean, he likes it. He feels like he's missing something if he doesn't do it. Well, I don't love it. But I'm going to get there. Amen? Now, I mean, I do, I do exercises now. I do certain things that really help me, but I know that I need to crank it up to the next level. And so I, I got this thing, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll give this a go. So I watched the little video, and, and uh, you know, the, the thing that... Uh, I worked with a trainer for a while. I didn't last too long either, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> while I was working with him, one of the things he told me is he said, when you start doing these exercises you're going to feel like you can't do them. And, and he said, your body doesn't know how to do them, doesn't want to do them. And he said, it's really not even that you don't have the muscle to do them. He said, it's your cells have to be trained how to do them. And so you have to do them over and over. And then the more you do them, it's like it gets programmed into you. And then your body actually starts to cooperate with you. But you, it, it's the repetition that teaches your body how to do it. Okay, so now to do this thing right, you gotta, there's like four things you gotta do at once. So you start, you gotta, you know, sit, head up, bottom tucked. All right, now. That's one of the moves. Okay, but now, and that was okay, I'm watching the video, I think that's cool, I can do that. I, I got that, that's all right. And then they said, now, you, when you see the little arrows on the screen, if the arrows are going this way, you push. If they're going that way, you pull. Now I'm like, well see, now I'm trying to push and pull and I forget to do the rest of it. Then they get into the breathing part. Now you gotta breathe. When you go this way, you're in, and you go out. So, I'm, so I'm, now I'm trying to breathe and I forgot to push and pull. And, and, and then you're supposed to do these face exercises while you're doing this. And so I'm into this, now you're supposed to go on. <laughs> Man, I have had a week, let me tell you. <laughs> but you know what? I did the first workout, and the next morning I was so sore I couldn't hardly stand it. And I thought, well, it works. But see, I know that I know that I know that if I stick with this or whatever you choose, it can be a bike, it can be walking, or it can be free exercise. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to sell whatever this is, you know. I don't even know what it is yet, but, you know. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just something that I think that maybe I can do it. I mean, I can carry that on the road. That's, you know, I can handle this. You know what I mean? I can do this. That, this I can, you know. It's gonna take a while though. So, <laughs> here's what I decided. I'm gonna get the movement part down first. Forget the breathing, forget the pushing and the pulling, forget the face. I'm getting this part down first, you know. I mean, there's more to it than that. I'm just showing you the easy part. And then I thought, after I'm getting really good at that, because I've already noticed, like, by the third time I did this, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Because, see, it's, I'm starting to get it. Then I'm going to work on the breathing. Then I'll add in the... I get mixed up about that, and I'm always sucking when you're supposed to be blowing and blowing when you're supposed to be sucking. But you know what I do most of the time? I forget to breathe. While I'm trying to do it, I go... And then pretty soon I'm thinking, oh... And then after I get that part, then I'm going to do the push and the pull and the push and the pull, and then we'll see about the face. I don't know about that one. 
The point is, don't quit and give up. Just because it doesn't feel easy, whatever it is. Giving may not feel easy. It may not feel comfortable for you to exhort people. You know, there are people that are natural exhorters and natural encouragers, and that just oozes out of them. But then there's people, it's hard for them to give people compliments. It's just, they just feel funny doing it. But you know what? You don't have to feel right about it. The Bible says to do it. And so therefore, when you, when you look at somebody, you think, oh, their hair is really pretty. Then what you do is you discipline yourself to go and open your mouth and say, your hair looks really pretty. And it doesn't frankly matter how you feel, you're being obedient to God and you're training yourself to live a new kind of life. And pretty soon, that will get so comfortable for you that you won't, you couldn't even imagine doing anything else other than getting up and just encouraging people all day. Can I tell you something? We, we <laughs> the life that we're supposed to live is so different than the life the world lives. And church, we have to be so careful that we don't just go to church and just be like the rest of the world and just have a bumper sticker and a tape recorder and a Jesus pen and a pair of cross earrings and think that's all we need. Go back to Romans 6 for just a moment, if you will. You getting anything out of this tonight? Am I getting my point across? I want us to look at, at two scriptures. If I can find the one I want to read to you. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that, and so the so that is important because it's telling us why we went, why Jesus went through what he went through and allowed us to partake of it. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually, see that? Habitually live and behave in newness of life. We gotta farm new habits. L listen, listen to this. Genesis 24, 40, Abraham walked habitually in the presence of God. Psalm 1, 2, David said, he delights in God's law and he habitually meditates on it day and night. In John 6, they said, what can we do to be habitually working the works of God? See, doing, doing something right one time will not overturn all the dumb stuff we've done all of our life. I mean, if we've got a whole world full of weeds, throwing out a couple of good seeds is not going to choke out all those weeds. But if we farm habits, and if we say, I'm going to farm new habits, and I'm going to learn how to live this new life, you know what? Don't let it be a burden to you. Let it be an exciting journey. I'm excited about my walk with God. To be honest with you, if I go too long without God dealing with me about something, I start to get a little bit bored. I like that process now. I like to always have something on the table that, that I know that God is asking me to come up a little bit higher in this area. I think that should just be part of the excitement of being a Christian, is always, always wanting to improve and always wanting to represent God in a greater way. You know what, the greatest danger that you can have is to get satisfied. Well, you know, I don't, I don't have a great prayer life, but I'm satisfied. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know the Bible that much, but my preacher does, I'm satisfied. No, man, be hungry. Be hungry spiritually. Be hungry for more of God. Be hungry for holiness. Be hungry for righteousness. Be hungry for souls. You know, Paul goes through this thing in Romans 7, starting in verse 15. He says, I don't understand myself. <laughs> the thing I want to do, I don't do. The thing I don't want to do, I'm always doing. Now we, we can all, we read that and we're going like, oh man, there's somebody else like me. <laughs> we all go through this. Every single one of us go through this. When you're born again, you get a new heart, you get a new spirit, all this good stuff is placed on the inside of you and you get new desires. And you, you, so you want to do these good things, but then you don't do them. 
And then sooner or later you say, what is my problem? What is wrong with me? I want to do what's right, and I keep doing what's wrong. And Paul went through the same thing. Our beloved Apostle Paul, who got two-thirds of the New Testament by direct revelation, went through the same thing that we go through. He said, what is wrong with me? I want to do what's right, but I don't do what's right. And then he goes on and he says in verse 18, I'm, I have to skip part of it because I'd have to explain a lot of it. No time to do that now. He said, I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. In my flesh. There's nothing good in my flesh. There's nothing good in your flesh. But there's something good in your spirit. That's why you can say, I've been made right with God. I have right standing with God. Righteousness has been imputed to your spirit. You are right with God. And because you've been made right with God, you can progressively learn to do what's right. 